Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillah. Adada khalkihi rida nefsihi ve zinatu arşi ve midadi kelimati. Ve muntaha ilmi ve cemi meşşa'a ve khalaqa ve dara ve dara. Alemi gayri şehretir rahmanu rahim el malik el kudus el azizu hakim. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallahu vahduhu la şerika la. Lahu al-mulk, lahu al-ham, yuhyi ve yumint. Bi yedihi al-khaya ve huwa ala kulli şeyin kadir. ويشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله وأرسله بهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كل لا كرهات المشركين ما بعد وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب إنما يخشى الله من عباده على العلماء إن الله عزيز غفور عزيز غفور الله سبحانه وتعالى هي من تزن الآية إنما يخشى الله من عباده على العلماء that the servant who is the most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that stands in awe for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from you know from amongst his servants is those people who are learned this ayat is very important to the topic that we're going to talk on not just knowledge generally right not just knowledge generally but knowledge specifically Especially knowledge that helps you in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaksha, that fear, is not just that innate fear just being afraid of, but that fear that will also cause you to act and behave in a specific manner. Right? If one is in fear of, you know, being punished for a particular action, they will avoid that action. Sometimes you'll even go to the extent if it's someone that you some a person that you're fearful of, you'll even go to the extent to learn the person's dislikes and likes so that you stay in that person's good graces so that there's, you know, nothing that will be an, an action that I mean uh being actions taken against you. Right? So this here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about from amongst his servants, al ulama, and we're not talking about just it's not limited to just a group of learned scholars, as many of us in our mind we have, because the Sahabas, as they were learning from the Prophet Sallallahu they were also implementing. So it wasn't just an academic uh, acquisition of knowledge. It wasn't just an academic, but it was an acquisition of knowledge that helped them change and to become better people. Now, in this next narration that, that we want to mention that the Prophet Sallallahu you will see the opposite. For that acquisition, if you don't acquire knowledge, if you don't seek after knowledge, that here you'll see what the Prophet Sallallahu is speaking of. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, Anis, Anis is the narrator of this narr narration. He says, Sami'atu min al-Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa ha uh, hadithan la yuhadithukum bihi gharirin. He said, I'm going to narrate to you Something that no one else will be able to narrate to you. He said that he learned that something that he learned from the Prophet. Sallallahu so he said, Min ashratish sa'a an yadhara jahl. Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, from the ashrat al sa'a, from the uh signs, they translate it as the signs of the hour, but it's more so a condition, the word shart, a shurut, right? The, the conditions of the hour, these things take place before, you know, as the hour is approaching. These are the, the, the outward signs or these conditions are fulfilled before the hour, right? The Prophet Sallallahu he said, and yadhara jahlu, right? That knowledge, will, I mean, ignorance will be apparent. You'll have apparent ignorance. Right? You notice that we keep talking about within the, you know, within the city, the decline of people knowing about Islam. Well, we might as well stop talking. It's just really just wasting breath because the Prophet says something already told us and it's a sign of the hour. It's the, that ignorance will become apparent to you. It'll be apparent. They don't, they, they lack understanding with regards to deen, their practices, right? Those things, there's things that's in the Quran that's clear for you to understand. Bayan, but however, we still behave as if, if as if we can't comprehend what Allah Ta'ala is saying, right? And those things that we're not supposed to go to, those are the things that we, you know, those are the things we like to interpret, 
right? And do the contrary, do the total opposite, right? So the yadhar, yadhar, right? It becomes apparent jahil. That the ignorance becomes apparent. But then there's a, it's like a double, a double whammy because what did the Prophet Sallallahu say after that? He says, wa qilla ilm. Then knowledge, like, you know, knowledge in itself becomes scarce. It becomes scarce. Even though you see that we, what, and now think about this. We claim that we're in a, a information era. We're in an information era. But if you look at the practice of the Muslims with all of the information running around, there's barely anybody praying. There's barely people that know they're for, uh, they're, they're, they're far. There's barely people that know how to read the Quran. It appears that, that there's a lot of information. But however, if you look, there's very, there's very little people that know this information. So the ignorance, the ignorance, the, 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 the knowledge is becoming little. And then not only that, if you pay close attention, knowledge is being monopolized. That you're really being boxed in a corner and your knowledge is controlled. How do you, how, how so? How many people you hear talk about jihad? How many people you hear talk about the benefits of jihad? But most of the, everything that you hear is about purifying the heart. Whether Abu Hanifa was an alim or not. Whether Imam Malik's arms was broken. That's why he didn't cross them or, or you know, they, uh, 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 you know, all of these is being monopolized. You're being put in a box. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught the deen as a whole. But we're only following one way. And so you could be well versed. You could be versed and know that Allah Ta'ala is different from creation, but still be a criminal by you know, w without feeling any guilt. You can still do that. You can know all of the fiqh, the ahkam, the fiqh rulings to a madhab, but still don't pray. But the knowledge, but we claim that we're in the information knowledge. Information is like looking at a billboard. Oh, mashallah, if you get Geico, you can save money, mashallah. And you keep right on going. And that's the same thing that we're doing. How many times people go, they be like, yo, you know what? I need to get my ill, my, my knowledge together. Let me go in here and buy this book, Kitabu Tawheed, right? And then they get another book, Kitabu Tawheed Doom, right? And then they get another book, in that, in that Kitabu Tawheed Den. It's the same book over and over. Your knowledge is being monopolized. Your thinking is being controlled, but you believe that you're absolutely free. But however, if one learns the true sciences of the deen, learns the Quran, constantly read the Quran, this is what the Sahaba did. It'll have a different effect. When an ayat, when a, when an ayat was revealed, the Sahabas acted on it. They didn't say, well, we don't know the true interpretation of it. They didn't say, oh, we'll just wait. They didn't say, they just did. Submit that, we'll talk on that. Right? So then the Prophet ﷺ went on to say, he said, Zina, right? That zina basically becomes the normal practice. Zina becomes the normal practice. There's no problem now. If you if you're on the internet, it you know, you, you get you get pictures of people's private parts. You don't even have to get them personally sent to you no more. They're displayed on their on their regular pic, uh, uh outward profile. Naked women, right? Oh, zina. Many of, our, many of our children were grandparents by means of our children not being married. Zina becomes apparent. And we're talking about Muslim, born, raised Muslim. But these things become apparent. They become the normal practice. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went on and he said, Right? Now, I just did a little research this morning to look into this, into this subject of Khamr. I wanted to see what is the most consumed legal toxicant. Number one was alcohol. Number two was tobacco, cigarettes. Number three was marijuana. Number three was marijuana. These are the, the top three consumed. And they say that marijuana is the gateway drug, but I actually believe it's alcohol. I believe it's actually alcohol because people will drink to be social. Everybody won't, everybody will smoke marijuana, even though they're going, you know, leaning more and more towards that because it seems like a healthy lifestyle and everything else, you know, uh, connected to it. But however, this is where people are leaning towards now. They're leaning towards that. 
But the bottom line is, is that the minds are always befuddled. How many of us have Muslim children, our children come in high? They be like, yo, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just hungry, Abby. You know, I was just trying to get something to eat. And you look at them, they high. Right? Come on. These things, these things, why? Because of the ignorance. Think about it first. The first two things the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, Yadharu Jahl. Right? That ignorance would be apparent. And then secondly, Yakilla al ilm. And then knowledge, knowledge would become scarce. Right? Ignorance would become apparent, meaning they're going to ignore the Sharia. Then knowledge that becomes scarce, they're not even looking to acquire information anyway. Most people that commit sins, they have a very low level of, of knowledge and they, they barely seek any out, right? So then the, la the next uh, couple things that I mentioned, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, وَكِلَّا رِجَالِ وَيَكْثَرُ nisa." There's going to be very small amount of men. And if you look, what was it? Or at least 500 people was killed last year and maybe... About maybe out of that, probably 75 were women. So that's about 425 men. We're not worried about race, just men in general. Because when a man dies, that leaves women folk behind. So you're, you're literally witnessing this from the Prophet's mouth. He says, Hatta yakunu li khamsan imara'atu qiyamu hunna rajlan wahid. That the men will decrease and the women will increase so much that there'll be 50 women to one man to look after them. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidu Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. رضي الله تعالى عنه وسرد التابعين وعلماء أمنين وأئمة أربع مشتهدين ومقالتهم إلى يوم الدين مضاع وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما, بما, بما تعملون الخبير الله سبحانه وتعالى he informs you in the Quran and this should inspire us as it inspired the Sahabas not every Sahaba was on the same level when it came to uh, knowledge generally, right? Meaning there was some Sahabas who knew more than others. As a matter of fact, one of the one of the Sahabas that least narrated Hadith, but he was always a companion, always with the Prophet Sallallahu is you'll find the name the least mentioned is Abu Bakr Siddiq, right? Not that he was ignorant. But he didn't narrate as much hadith as Abu Huraira. And Abu Huraira only spent three years with the Prophet Sallallahu Right? He spent three years with the Prophet Sallallahu He didn't spend a, a long amount of time. Even though he narrates the most hadith, you would think that he was the one that, you know, spent the most time. This isn't the case. Knowledge is something that you have to recognize is given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. How you act on it is, is all in the control of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. <laughs> However, the acquisition, you have to still go after it, go after it and seek after this now. So here, the, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, يَرْفُوا اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ He said, Allah ta'ala will raise those who believe uh, 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 from among you, right? وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Right? He'll raise the rank of the believer, meaning the stronger your iman is, the more the darja, the, the, the higher, the, the more your level is, right? I don't know what is happening today, but it seems to be the harder you work, the better person you are, right? Society deems you the better person. The kind of job you got, that's the kind of job that's the better person. Oh, I'm a lawyer. Oh, mashallah, he's a lawyer. You see that? Right? I might be a guy that just work at, you know, work, work a cashier at, at checkers, right? Oh, you know, mashallah, brother, you need to keep, you know, keep, keep striving, right? The lawyer may know nothing about Islam. I may know everything about Islam. But still, you'll look, but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that darajat, that avenue, you have to have strong iman and ilm and knowledge. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on and he says, Wallahu bima ta'amalun al khabir. And Allah ta'ala is aware of what you do. So you don't be concerned about what people think about you, but rather when you go out and, and seek the acquisition of knowledge and trying to build your iman, it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And of course, you gain benefit from it because here the Prophet Sallallahu we're going to uh, read to you a couple hadith and then we're, we're done with the khutbah, inshallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu was mentioned from Abu Hurairah that he said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Salaka tariqan yal tamisu fihi ilman sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqatil ila jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who makes his, makes his path to seek out knowledge. He goes to seek out knowledge. Of course, I mean, we talk, what kind of knowledge are we talking about? We're talking about knowledge of benefit that's with, with regards to your deen. All knowledge, anything when you make the attention. See, the, one of the things is and when you study the uh, curriculum of the uh, uh, Bilal of Sudan of West Africa, we didn't have no, we didn't have a thing called secular knowledge and religious knowledge. It was all one. Algebra was considered part of the sciences of the deen. Right? In algebra, the whole concept of algebra, where does it come from? It comes from Islam. When you got to deal with inheritance. When you got to deal with inheritance. This person gets one fourth of this. This person gets one eighth of that. Well, how much is this? And those things. These sciences come from that. And also in the, in the Bilal of Sudan, for us, medicine is just as well as in the deen. Medicine is also considered part of Islam as well. So we didn't have that secular knowledge versus religious knowledge. Right? We didn't have that. This is something that is new. This is something that comes from, you know, uh, later colonization, uh, 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 European, uh, uh, embracing European colonization. So, Allah Ta'ala, when you seek out to make that, to seek out that knowledge, Allah Ta'ala makes the path for Jannah easy for you. Now, of course, the way that, the way that many of the khatibs, many of the, the, uh, the speakers or many of the, 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 the mudarris, the teachers, or many of the students, they make it as if these these people of knowledge is just this group of individual with the big beard, the biggest turban on, coming in on a flying carpet, and all he does is teach all day, and it leaves little old lowly old us who spend time, you know, making to hajjah at night, doing the regular things that regular people do, right? That we're not the people that's on that path to Jannah. Anytime that you seek any type of knowledge, it all begins. With you seeking, you know, seeking knowledge in order to change. And when you seek knowledge, then you, you, you're paving your path to Jannah. If a person wants to change his family, his family has to be on the knowledge. Too often do we have, and they had this during the time of the shame. Too often that we have where the men are well-versed, well in teach and everything else, and the family are ignorant about Islam. This is something that the shame spoke against. It's something that the Prophet said, tell them, you know, uh, 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 taught us how to, how, to, how to maintain our families and our households. See, the Sahabas, it wasn't just the father and then the kids, they just did whatever. The kids were just as much as part of it. How do we, how do we learn, especially for us to follow the Amal al Medina? Where does our path take us back to? It takes us back to two people, father and son. Umar ibn Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar. Then it takes you from Abdullah ibn Umar to Nafi, from Nafi to Imam Malik, right? There was a correlation with all of this going on. Knowledge, and this hadith is a perfect example of it that I'm about to mention. This hadith is narrated on behalf of Sahal ibn Mu'ad that he mentioned that he narrated on behalf of his father. Look at that, a family thing. And you benefit even as, as a teacher and it's not just restricted to men. Men aren't the only people who acquire knowledge and teach. It's, a, it's incumbent upon both. Who transmits the knowledge? If you look at the life, you go and read the biography of the life. And I put the biography in the uh, the book I translate, Usuluddin. You'll read about the, the, the biography of the Shehu. He learned from his paternal father. I mean, he learned from his paternal uncle, maternal uncle, from his, uh, from, from, you know, uh, his daughter, his daughter, Asmao, her mother died. She was raised up by, by his other wives, right? So, you know, it's passed down generations. It's a legacy. I know in our time now, most of us are concerned about what? And this is important. I'm not saying that it's not passing down generational wealth. But as a Muslim, we're not one dimensional. We want to pass down this deen generationally. And if you have wealth to pass down, that's part of Islam too. That's an act of ibadah as well. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sahal is narrating on behalf of his father. He said, "Anna Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma'a qala 
من علم العلم فلا فله اجرا من عمل به لا ينقص ينقص من اجر عامل the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever teaches some knowledge will have the reward of the one who acts upon it right who's the first teacher to the child the parent the first child you teach that child think about it you teach the child something as as what we would consider as mundane as as something as as not as important as using the bathroom and you teach that child after we use the bathroom son daughter right you have to make a stinge up you have to make a stitch mark you have to wipe yourself you have to pour water on yourself to make sure that you clean and that child does that from the time from the time that they yeah, from that moment you taught them until they enter the grave you receive the same reward as if you've done it every time so think about this if you have knowledge of things and you're transmitting that knowledge and you're teaching it your first captive audience is your family if you're not married you should desire to be married to find a wife in order to do these kind of things but most of us, we're not mar getting married in order to establish family. We kind of like getting married to cool enough saw, but you can forget about the family part. And this is why it's so easy for everybody to walk away. Ain't nobody got nothing to lose. Yeah, just, I'm out. Right? But if, the thing, if it's important to you that you establish the family, you'll be concerned about the well-being of the family overall and in general. Think about this. You're passing down knowledge. You have an obligation to educate your family first, right? Then everyone else is, is secondary. It's, it's, it's mustahab to teach other people outside of your household. You have an obligation. So those things that you teach, you'll receive benefit and reward from it. And then, and then in closing, he mentioned, he said, and without there being detracted, any of the slightest reward, meaning you'll receive the full reward for it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa shalom alayhi wa ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka kama salat.